Perhaps one of the most common phrases I have ever heard while working in the hospital is I'm tired or I haven't slept much. In fact, I would be speechless if someone said to me, I'm never tired. I do not get tired. I would ask that person to be my case study and that would be my golden ticket to solve the phenomena of fatigue in healthcare. Fatigue or tiredness is universally experienced and yet an individualized feeling that manifests through physical, mental, emotional, and even social aspects of one's life. It is your body's alert signal telling you to slow down, rest, and sleep. Yet very often this signal, which is normal and expected to occur, is ignored because of daily pressures and responsibilities of various kinds. When you are tired in the safety of your home, fatigue has no or minimal repercussions. Fatigue in action becomes a safety hazard. In hospital nurses that need vigilance and energy to meet the dynamic needs of the job, fatigue interferes and creates an unsafe environment for safe nursing practice. I believe my interest in the field of occupational safety and health started almost 13 years ago with preparing an odd-looking blue poster titled Medication Errors Root Cause Analysis. While looking into these error reports, I remember questioning why being tired was not an option or a valid reason to make an error. Little I knew then that being fatigued and sleep deprived is related to performance decrements and medical errors. During my doctoral studies, I focused on work induced fatigue in 12 hour shift hospital nurses, including gaining expertise in fatigue measurement using both subjective and objective measures. I examined work-related fatigue with outcomes, such as drowsy driving and medication errors, and sickness absence over the past three years. Before discussing absenteeism, I want to mention that fatigue mitigating strategies and recovery are important pieces of my research. I share with you my lessons learned, experience, my Longwood garden photos, where I was invited in the middle of my dissertation with my mentor, an intervention visit designed by my mentor to address my poor recovery measures, elevated fatigue and mental fatigue states, which was highly effective. Sickness absence are problematic and costly in healthcare that require 24 seven uh, service coverage. For example, one nurse's absence cascades into more work days, longer shifts and elevated fatigue states for those that remain on hospital units. Sickness abscess indicates poor physical and or mental health and is related to work disability, morbidity, and even mortality. However, the frequency and duration of absences can be decreased with modifiable risk factors such as fatigue and poor sleep. With strong evidence between chronic fatigue and future absences in the European workforce, my research aims to better understand this relationship in the nursing workforce where nurse fatigue is highly common. Contrary to the literature, my study in 12-hour shift hospital nurses showed that acute fatigue at baseline increases the odds of absence by 25%. In terms of practicality, while fatigue self-reports are highly informative, we cannot continuously rely on them. One probable solution is biomathematical fatigue models uh, that can estimate fatigue risk from work schedules, which can be easily incorporated in the workplace. These programs have been effective in safety critical industries in reducing uh, accident incidents, however, not been tested with sickness absence nor used in healthcare. Interestingly, my second study showed that nurses' fatigue risk estimates while using two different software programs significantly uh, predicted uh, absence from work with clear dose relationships. As I plan and initiate my projects in fatigue absence management, I think of the health and well-being of nurses, the inevitable night shifts where nurses are at higher risk of developing health problems, the day shifts that typically run 12.5 hours coupled with poor sleep opportunities. I also think of an aging workforce, an aging nursing workforce who will provide nursing care to an aging population. What are my next steps? I aim to develop a proactive sickness absence management program that mitigates fatigue, including other factors, and that focuses on both work and non-work countermeasures, such as naps, safe uh, work time arrangements, and recovery. I aim to examine the effects of brief naps during shifts on nurses' sickness absences when they are more likely to occur. 
Besides fatigue software programs, I aim to include objective fatigue measures in my research, such as oculoparameter, oculomotor parameters that are feasible and able to generate reliable fatigue data with the ultimate aim of employee behavior changes over time. Finally, I seek to better understand fatigue and sleep quality patterns in older adult workforce, which will guide me to craft more tailored workplace fatigue interventions that will support safe and productive aging and much needed work tenure. As nurses operate on principles of care towards patients and their families, it is time to direct the same caring approach towards nurses as well as healthcare providers. While some hospitals are progressive in their adapted fatigue management strategies, others have stayed behind. My final message is to call for collaborative efforts and partnerships between hospitals and healthcare workers, nurses, and start with simple initiatives such as implementing brief naps during night shifts, ensuring meal breaks, offering sleep health education, or integrating fatigue software programs to ensure and yet flexible time arrangements for nurses. I will end my message with a saying I recently read. If healthcare is the essence of your brand, it all starts with taking the health of your workforce very seriously. Thank you.